Our topic here is about point on the terminal side of a central angle in a unit circle. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to illustrate and derive the point on the terminal side of a central angle in a unit circle. We need to be mindful that all throughout this lesson, theta as a central angle is always in standard position. P of theta refers to the point with the coordinates x and y on the terminal side of theta in a unit circle. Let's start with determining the point of quadrantal angles. Please take note that the values of the arc length s and the central angle theta in a unit circle are numerically equal. In figure 1, theta rotates in one full revolution and terminates at positive x-axis. Therefore, p of 2 pi equals 1 comma 0. In figure 2, shows an arc length that is half of a one full rotation. So theta is pi and terminates at negative x-axis. With this, p of pi is negative 1, 0. Figure 3 has an arc length, pi halves, and terminates at positive y-axis. So p of pi halves is 0, 1. Figure 5 has arc length, 3 pi halves. 3 pi halves terminates at negative y-axis. With this, p of 3 pi halves is 0, comma, negative 1. Figure 6 shows an arc length that is 1 eighth of a one full rotation. Its length will be 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4 in reduced form. What is the point on the terminal side of pi over 4 on the unit circle? When its arc length is pi over 4, then the central angle theta is pi over 4. We need to know the coordinates x and y. To find the x and y coordinates of p, we draw a right triangle such that one of its vertices is the point p. The right triangle with its vertex at the origin has 45 degree measure. So then the angle measure with point P as the vertex is also 45 degrees. Using the Pythagorean theorem on the triangle with sides X and Y, such that X is equal to Y, we will get the value of X and Y. That is by changing Y to X, we have 2x squared equals 1, and finally we have x is equal to plus and minus square root of 2 over 2. And since we are in the first quadrant, your x will have a positive sign. x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Now we have p of pi over 4 equals square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Let us investigate figure 11. What have you noticed with the coordinates x and y on its terminal side of theta on the unit circle? Do we need to memorize the coordinates with its central angle? Not necessarily, right? The central angles are in order. Pi over 4. This is 2 pi over 4. That will give us pi halves. This is 3 pi over 4, and then this is 4 pi over 4, and that is pi. And this is 5 pi over 4, this is 6 pi over 4, and this is 7 pi over 4, and this is 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. There are 8 pi over 4 in one full rotation. So when theta terminates in positive y-axis, there are 2 pi over 4, that is pi halves in reduced form. 
When it terminates in second quadrant, there are 3 pi over 4, such that it gives us 3 pi over 4, and so on. The coordinates are of the same number, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. For x and y, the sign of the coordinates follows according to the quadrant where it terminates. Do we need to memorize this? Understand how p of pi over 4 and its coordinates were derived. Then you'll probably get the rest of the central angles with its coordinates with respect to pi over 4 as its reference angle. If one full rotation of an arc length in a circle is divided into six equal arcs, what is arc length x? Its arc length will be 2 pi over 6 because you have 6 equal arcs in 2 pi. That is, s is equal to pi over 3. What is the point on the terminal side of theta equals pi over 3 on the unit circle? Let us derive the coordinates of the point using a right triangle with point P as one of the vertices on the triangle. Since its central angle is 60 degrees, then the measure of the angle with P as its vertex is 30 degrees. Note that in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the measure of the side opposite 30 degrees is half the hypotenuse. Since radius r is equal to 1, then opposite 30 degrees is 1 half, which is the coordinate of x. Using the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and by substituting the value of x equals 1 half, and simplifying the equation, we derive y is equal to positive and negative square root of 3 over 2. But since we are in first quadrant, y will have a positive sign, square root of 3 over 2. Then we have p of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. With the help of p of pi over 3, that is equal to 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2, it would be easy to determine the coordinates of the central angles 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. These angles are accordingly in order, using pi over 3 as the reference angle. The coordinates are of the same numbers, 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2, all throughout the central angles. The sign differs according to its quadrant. From the previous illustrations, I know you can answer the following exercises. If one full rotation of an arc length in a circle is divided into 12 equal arcs, what is the length of arc S? Using figure 18, find the coordinates of the points on the terminal side of theta in a unit circle. Determine the other central angles in a unit circle using the length of arc S as reference angle that terminate in quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Still using figure 18, determine P of theta such that theta is a central angle derived in exercise 3. That terminates in quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. If the central angle is rotated counterclockwise more than one full rotation, what is p of 8 pi over 3, p of 13 pi over 4, and p of 19 pi over 6? And lastly, if the central angle is rotated clockwise, what is p of negative 2 pi over 3, that is p of negative 9 pi over 4, and p of negative 7 pi over 6? Share your answer and post it below. 
If you have queries with the topic discussed, have it posted below also. Thank you.